Hello lads, today I would like to remark upon something that I don't think anyone has talked about before, but which I find to be uh, a rather interesting um, phenomenon or, or question or, or uh, um, uh, development. And it concerns two uh, men who were notorious in the mid-90s uh, for, uh, for bombing things, bombing and killing people. Um, and those two men that I want to consider are Ted Kaczynski, the so-called Unabomber, um, and Timothy McVeigh, the alleged uh, lone perpetrator of the uh, bombing of the Oklahoma City uh, uh, Murrah building, which, which killed hundreds of people in uh, 1995. Now, what I find so fascinating about, about how things have developed with these two guys um, is that what we've seen amongst the dissident right, amongst, you know, the online right, what used to be called the alt-right, what the, the left would, in spooky tones, call the far right, um, uh, what we see is very few people uh, talk about Timothy McVeigh in a positive light. In fact, I haven't heard anyone praise Timothy McVeigh on the dissident right. And, and <clears throat> this is, you know, this is people who, uh, who aren't, this, I'm talking about people who aren't afraid to express, you know, radicalized uh, uh, perspectives. And yet there is a great deal of praise and I would say even reverence now for Ted Kaczynski, <clears throat> the Unabomber. Now, what did these two men do? Well, I mean, just, just in a nutshell, just to, just to keep it simple here, simple summary, uh, Kaczynski was uh, a brilliant, uh, uh, you know, teacher of science who went to Harvard at age like 15 or something, um, very precocious. Uh, but who eventually soured on academia and soured on technology generally and came to see that technology was having a baleful influence on modern uh, life and that it was creating a world that was more and more dystopic uh, and, and uh, uh, more and more oppressive. And of course, what he called the fourth industrial revolution uh, was uh, what he called it was his name for uh, this this trend, uh, this developing trend, which in the 90s it was only in its nascent uh, form. You know, the internet had only just gotten started. Uh, there there were there were were no uh, cell phones or uh, um, you know smartphones. There was no social media, um, uh, but still. He had a sense of where, thing, where things were going, and he very strongly opposed it. And he ended up uh, believing that it was uh, necessary and, and uh, correct to send bombs to various people. He, he, uh, he sent mail bombs to a couple of, uh, 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 I don't know, a few people, um, and a couple of them died. One of them was maimed. These were like professors of technology or pushers of, you know, the techno technocratic uh, um, uh, uh, belief system or whatever. But he also was a lot, in, in some cases, much more arbitrary. Uh, he bombed a store once when, when he found out that they were advertising, uh, where they were selling word processors, uh, which he, he thought anyone who's selling a word processor rather than just a regular typewriter, which is what he used in his crappy little shed, you know, out in Montana, what he used to type up his, his manifesto. Uh, he, he saw that as a, a, a good enough reason uh, to bomb that store. Um, and he also tried to bomb an airplane, which would, it, it didn't succeed, but if it had succeeded, it would have killed a lot of innocent people. Um, so Kaczynski's obviously got blood on his hands. You can, you can say that some of the people he targeted 
uh, you know, were uh, deserved it. You, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but you could make the argument that, that some people who were powerful people who were pushing these kinds of ideas and, and uh, put, you know, pr helping, helping to promote this world uh, of uh, uh, dystopic, dyst dystopic uh, technological uh, overreach uh, that, that they, you could say, you know, uh, that you could make a case for why they were uh, necessary victims, which I'm not doing, but, um, or necessary targets. Um, but a lot, I think that he also has a lot of blood on his hands of, of more, much more innocent people. Um, but to him, it was it was necessary uh, a necessary campaign because he saw where the world was headed, and in a lot of ways, you know, how can we argue uh, with the uh, with the things that he many of the points that he made in his uh, manifesto they've come true. <clears throat> you know, I would say that, and I'm not I'm not an advocate of, of Kaczynski myself. Um. So that's so that's Kaczynski's uh, uh, history. Uh, he was eventually uh, uh, he he actually got this was such a gangster move. I have to say, he he actually got his his uh, his manifesto published by the, the the New York Times and the Washington Post. I mean that's that's something you just you have to say. Wow, uh, you know the the you know he's he uh, that's that's getting it, he, he had it going on clearly um you know you have to <laughs> kind of have a, a kind of grudging at least respect for that uh but back then they thought this was this would be a way to the the these, these newspapers thought this would be a way to help people identify him and it did ultimately help uh his brother to identify him uh and his brother recognized his writing and so, thought this sounds like ted um, and uh, eventually told uh, the FBI, and, and he was arrested. So what was the story with, of Timothy McVeigh? Timothy McVeigh was uh, an Army veteran. He was uh, uh, a good soldier. He took part in uh, um, the, the first uh, Iraq War, I guess what was, what was back then called the Gulf War, the, uh, the liberation of Kuwait after Saddam Hussein moved in in the in the early 90s uh, he he was a part of that uh, that whole um, that whole military campaign um, he came home after that and became increasing uh, okay this is the official story right the official story is he became increasingly disaffected by uh, by the government by governmental overreach um, so a lot of the same concerns that you could say Kaczynski had, although, um, although McVeigh wasn't really, uh, into, uh, the, the, the technocratic side of things, uh, or, or, or talking about how technology was, was, uh, harming modern man. It was more just, he saw things happening that angered him officially. This is the official story because I'm going to get to, you know, there are a lot of people who question the official story. I'm going to get to that in a second. But, so, uh, McVeigh, what really set him off was Waco. When the ATF agents moved in on Waco and, and just this mass slaughter ensued and, uh, you know, uh, hundreds of people in the Waco uh, uh, church, uh, of the belonging to David Koresh, the, the Branch Davidians, when, when they were killed, uh, it was it, it, this angered a lot of people. This 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 set a lot of people off. Uh, it, it it was a black mark for uh, uh, for the feds. By the way, look at I'll show you my shirt here. An appropriate shirt to be wearing on this occasion. Um, so <laughs> so the the um, official story is that two years after Waco. Uh, on the exact date of what happened at Waco, April 20th or April 19th, I can't remember which, which one it was. I know one of those, it's, it's also Hitler's birthday 
And it's also the day of, uh, of marijuana. <laughs> That's the 19th and the 20th of April are just, the, there's a lot going on around that, that, those two days. But he, uh, on the anniversary of Waco, he uh, supposedly, allegedly, on his own, except w with the help of one other guy, Terry Nichols, but otherwise just, just completely on his own, set uh, a bomb uh, that, that went off uh, and uh, blew up the, the Murrah building in Oklahoma City and killed hundreds of people, including children. So it seems to me that that these, if, if you were to, to, sit, to take these two men, <clears throat> extrapolate, like, like if you were in, in 1995 or, or, or 1996, you know, when these two men were in the news, and you were to say, okay, uh, if we if we go um, uh, almost three decades into the future, which of these two guys is going to be revered by uh, by the right, by people uh, on the dissident right? Is it going to be Timothy McVeigh, or is it going to be Ted Kaczynski? What's remarkable is that the uh, the uh, the dissident right has largely embraced Ted Kaczynski and basically forgotten about Timothy McVeigh or basically uh, don't, they don't talk about him. Uh, I've never, I mean, I've been, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people on the dissident right. I've never heard anybody praise Timothy McVeigh, not once. I've never, I've never read anybody praising him for, for his, uh, for striking back at the federal government for what they did at, at Waco. So this is interesting for a couple of reasons. One is that you would think that Timothy McVeigh would be much more aligned with uh, the, the, uh, the philosophy uh, and the ideology of the dissident right today. Um, and, because because he was uh, an anti-government right wing, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, the feds are are, are thugs uh, kind of guy, and he, he I think they, there were some some racist and anti-Semitic uh, aspects to his uh, his thinking as well, or, or, or there's indications of that. Again, if you believe the official story, whereas Ted Kaczynski was definitely considered a lefty. He was a radical environmentalist. Um, he did what he did, uh, not only, pri not even primarily for mankind, but, but for, uh, for nature. He, he hated seeing nature getting ravaged, uh, by, by technology. Uh, and, uh, th this was, this was the big thing that spurred him on. So, so you got one guy who, who's not, not racist at all, um, uh, not, <laughs> doesn't really seem to have based ideas uh, on uh, you know, any of those kinds of issues, although he did in his, uh, in his manifesto make a lot of fun of political correctness and liberals, but mostly just because he, he thought that was, it was just so ineffective and, and they were pathetic. Um, whereas, uh, McVeigh, you know, had, has, fits the profile of somebody that you would think would be, uh, would be lionized. Again, if you are somebody who, who excuses violence, if you are somebody who thinks, uh, you know, we need to, uh, strike back, uh, against an oppressive government, um, they both felt that same way. Both McVeigh, it, both again, uh, the official story of McVeigh, uh, the official McVeigh, and Kaczynski both felt that way. Um, and yet, it's only Kaczynski who is revered today by the uh, uh, by the right. It's like, um, and I'm, I'm aware. That some of it is is meme. You know, he makes he makes a good meme, or, or 
people meme him a lot, and I, I get that. And there's there's a degree of irony to everything. Of course, I get that. But you don't see Timothy McVeigh being memed at all. Um, you don't see him being talked about at all. You don't see people praising his memory at all. Uh, why is that? Why is that? One reason is, and I, I wonder if this is a pre, you know uh, how prevalent uh, this this uh, sense is amongst people on the distant right. But one uh, uh, a, a general impression that people have is that the official story of Timothy McVeigh is not not the full truth. You know that in fact maybe McVeigh was. Uh, uh, I've heard him called a sheep-dipped, uh, you know, uh, uh, character. He was somebody who was uh, was chosen to go undercover and pose as an anti-government radical, <clears throat> and then took the uh, the blame for this bombing. You know, was this became this face of uh, of hate, you know, uh, and. Uh, in order to further the the agenda of uh, of the government, you know, which is that you know we've got all these dangerous domestic terrorists out there, but that the uh, the actual bombing of the of the Murrah building could not have been could not have taken place uh, just with with McVeigh and his his van parked out out in the front, and that that uh, <laughs> of course it's one another one of those interesting things. Where crucial videotape is missing, you know the FBI had uh, tape of, of him supposedly uh, pulling up, uh, but but then they lost it. Like, come on, what 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 do you mean you lost it? It's ridiculous. Uh, obviously something something very hinky there. So, do people? Here's my question. Here's here's what I'm pondering. Do people not revere McVeigh? Because they're more sure that he was uh, a, you know, just just a, a, an agent, you know, um, he he was uh, a false flaw. He he was he was a uh, he, uh, he helped to orchestrate this psyop, right? And I've heard it said, you know, that he you know he went to his death, but then they actually let him go, uh, and that he's he's now living under a secret identity. I don't know if any of that's true. I mean, he was ostensibly, uh, you know, given uh, lethal injection after his trial, but uh, but there are these, these kinds of stories abound. I remember seeing it on the, the Corbett report. Uh, so I'm wondering, is that the reason why, why McVeigh is not revered, uh, at, you know, why, why McVeigh is a terrorist from the 90s who is not revered by the dissident right, whereas uh, Kaczynski, who was not a man of the right, uh, really by any stretch, yet he became this uh, this figure that the right came to, uh, the, the dissident right anyway, came to embrace. I'm wondering, is it just because there's more of a sense that that Kaczynski was the real deal, that he was authentic, uh, and McVeigh wasn't. Is that it? Or is there something like, uh, something, does, does, does Kaczynski have more charisma uh, than McVeigh? It does the fact that Kaczynski wrote this, this, uh, you know, compelling meta, this compelling, uh, uh, manifesto, is that part of what accounts for his appeal. I really would like to know this. I'd, like, I'd be very inter interested to know anybody's thoughts on this development. Because, again, in 1995, you'd ask, uh, 1996, when uh, when uh, McVeigh was arrested, and, and then 1996, I think, was, a, was when uh, Kaczynski was arrested. If you'd ask people years from now, who do you think people uh, on the far right are going to revere Kaczynski or McVeigh. They would, people would say they, they'd probably it would be McVeigh, but that hasn't been the case at all. McVeigh is is nothing. McVeigh is never memed. Uh, he's not 
Uh, he's not praised. He's not not. He's rarely even talked about. So why is that? Whereas Kaczynski, who wasn't even, as I said, not even a, truly a man of the right, uh, has has gotten so much. Uh, there, there's there's so much of an outpouring of affection for him uh, as as he rots in jail uh, these days. Uh, there are so many people who just just love the guy. Um, anyway, just an interesting question. I thought I'd put it out there and uh, interested in anybody's thoughts on it. Thanks for watching.